welcome back to the english class and welcome to unit 3 what is this unit human relations if you think of it what is a world made of relations family members friends colleagues classmates neighbors yes so how important are relations in our world very important we must be understanding we must treasure relations in our life just because you've crossed a particular phase of your life and you've grown up don't forget your previous relations so there are some wonderful chapters in this unit that will talk to us about this aspect so in this let's take up the first reading reading a the journey let's see the journey starts with a page where you have a picture of an old man in a village sitting aside in front of his house in the front yard early in the morning he wakes up he sits there he watches people commuting busily in their daily work and then later on evenings he watches children come out and play have fun and then he disappears into the night on his own let's think for a moment what this old man goes through this is a small excerpt out of a an old man's diary let's see what he feels as i sit here alone and waiting i gaze at people passing me by gaze means look continuously i try to smile and reach out to them but no one notices no one waits they look to me they look at me like i am nothing are they afraid to be seen saying hi to an old man like me so what is this old man saying first thing let's understand that people when they are young they are busy with school college when they marry they are busy with families job and when they become older and children have gone their separate ways they suddenly fall alone suddenly there is no busyness in their life suddenly the children are no more there so you must spare a thought for old people always try to spare a moment for them this old man says people pass by they might look at me sometimes they don't even look at me even if they look at me are they ashamed to come and talk to me because i'm an old man so these are the kind of thoughts that go through old people's minds we as youngsters should always make it a point to take out a moment or two to spend time with them just chat a little don't pass by as if they don't even exist so let's proceed to the chapter have you observed i have something here that says relations must never fade they should always remain bright they should always remain intact so let's go into the story that is named the journey this story is a narrative a narration by the author so the author has gone home on a long holiday he starts the story by saying by talking about monday blues how many of you know what monday blues are on a sunday when it's a holiday the next morning is so difficult to wake up and go back to office or school right that is called monday blues and here the author the narrator is also suffering from monday blues that too not just one day he took 6 months paid leave from his office to go back home among the hills of arunachal pradesh where his tribal community lives he went there for the occasion of his wedding and now after having spent happy 5 to 6 months with his newly wed wife and his family and his neighbors he is feeling extremely lethargic to go back to office lethargic means low in energy but then he thinks what about all the debts i have incurred he took quite a bit of loans to arrange his marriage and why because he is one of the very few to become a government officer a highly educated officer from such a village so when such a person is getting married society has some expectations that he will throw a grand wedding so this man took quite a bit of loans to arrange such a 
high quality wedding and now he has to repay the debts so he thought I should go back to office and I must collect my salary if I have to repay the debts. Also, uh, the author has realized that now I am married, so I have a wife, my responsibilities have increased. Now it would not do me right if I extend my leave and ask him to give me at least unpaid leave. No, he thought let us not do that, let us pack our bags and go to office. So, he lives in a on the hills, the hilly terrains of Arunachal Pradesh as I mentioned. So, when people live in such places, the roads leading to their houses are strewn with pebbles and there is, there is no proper road layout and there is no proper conveyance, there is no traffic going up and down these hilly areas. So, when they travel, they travel light. So, the narrator also came with just one small trunk. Previously, there were no suitcases. People used to carry their luggage in small metal boxes called trunk. So, the day he came home, he found a porter at the bus stop. A porter is a person who helps you carry your luggage. So, the porter helped him with his trunk to go back home. But now, from home going to the bus stop, he was wondering, how will I go? There is no porter here. And the villagers are all busy in the harvest season. There is no one there to help me. You must be wondering, why can't he carry his own luggage and go march off to the bus stop? Let us spare a moment here. This person, if you see here, carrying the trunk should not have been such a worry for me except that my education had made me shun physical labor. Here, I would like to point out to you that sometimes we imbibe the wrong values, we pick up the wrong values from being highly educated or if you are from a very high position in society, we think that some jobs are okay to do and some jobs are too menial for us to do. Now, just because you have a Mustang car, is it wrong if you pick up a bucket and a piece of sponge and you go and clean your car? Is it wrong? No, it is your job. Well, many people feel that it is a menial thing to do. They are so educated and hi-fi society status that they should not be doing such jobs. That is wrong, but the narrator here is definitely suffering from it. After all, I was a government officer and the idea of people seeing me carry my own luggage was not at all amusing. So, he is so self-conscious, he has this false prestige, what will people think about me? But that is not needed. You must be an example for people, yes? Otherwise, for a young man like me, it is not a big deal to carry that. And so, he was wondering, what should I do? What should I not do? Meanwhile, his father says, no problem, I will carry the trunk for you. Do not worry, I myself will see you off at the rung. That is where the bus stop is. Now, the narrator is in a dilemma. Should I let my old father carry the trunk for me? What would people think? Again, false prestige, what will society think about me? What would they say? So, he tries to persuade his father into not carrying it, but he did not succeed. It was decided that father would carry the chest. That is his father carrying him in his childhood. So, the father says, ok, fine, if you are embarrassed that people will see you making me carry your trunk, do not worry, I will go ahead, you catch up later, that way no more, see. So, all was settled, father woke up early, took the trunk and went off. Later on, when it was time for the narrator to leave home, a large crowd gathered around his house to say goodbye to him. They all had come to wish him luck. So, the narrator started and he had to rush up a bit in order to catch up with his father and he was already panting and out of breath by the time he caught up with his father. And his father laughed at him. He said, ah, oh, looks like you are tired, shall we rest for a moment? But be careful, you should not miss the bus at Durang. So, they sit down. 
father was quiet, son was quiet, they were just having a quiet moment under a tree. It was a hot sunny day and then father suddenly remembered that their mother had packed a bottle of homemade wine for them. So he offers it to his son. The narrator takes a small sip, gives it back to his father and the father gulps it down all in one go and he says, come on, let's go. Now this road they're traveling on is full of stones and pebbles and it's not easy to walk. So this was the picture. The narrator was looking at what was going on in front of him. His father carrying the luggage on his back and going ahead and the narrator following him with a tiny bag in his hand. They didn't speak much as if almost like they didn't know each other, like strangers. And then from time to time, the narrator was asking himself, am I doing the right thing? Poor old father of mine, I'm making him carry my luggage and I'm not helping him. Should I offer to help him? It's going on in his mind. But look at this sentence. His guilt and shame did not allow him to do so. Again, he thought, oh no, I am a government officer. How can I do such a menial job? Somehow, he had a feeling that if I carried the luggage, my father, my people, in fact, the whole world would laugh at me and I would be belittled. That means looked down upon. Now here, think for a moment. Our people around us are busy in their own life. Do you think they are sitting there just to judge you and your actions? No, all such pro false prestige thoughts are something that we develop inside our brain. Just stop thinking about what the world will think of you. Think about what you are doing. Is it the right thing to do? The author, the narrator is definitely suffering from false prestige. But look what he does here in the next para. He tries to justify his actions. Sometimes when you know you're doing something wrong, you'll sit down and try to convince yourself that no, I did this because of this. No, it's okay I did that because this was the situation, right? You try to justify your wrong actions. That's wrong, you shouldn't do that. Look how the author, the narrator is now justifying his action of allowing his father to carry his luggage. Let's see how he's doing it. He's saying, father provided me this education with his hard work and today my parents are so proud that I'm one of the very few from the village to become an IAS officer. So they would definitely not like it if I carry my own luggage. That's what he thinks. And then he's saying, my father is a villager. He was a farmer from childhood. He's used to physical labor, but I grew up in hostels and I've never done any physical labor. I don't have so much energy as him. So it's okay, I think he can do it. And I think I can't. That's another way he justified his action. Soon they reached the place called Durang, the bus stop. And the bus from Tawang was supposed to come, stop at Durang and pick up the narrator. So they reached a little early and they spot a tea shop nearby and he says, Father, would you like to have tea? And the father says, uh, no, not tea, but do you have an old pair of shoes? The way back, I think I'll find it difficult to walk. My feet are already hurting. When he says that, the author looks at his father's feet. After such a long time, he doesn't even remember looking at his father's feet ever. In our Indian tradition, aren't we told to touch our parents' feet in respect? Looks like the author never did that. So when he glanced at his father's feet, he saw that they were dry, hard, full of cracks, like a person who never wore footwear. And then the author tells him, okay, fine, should I quickly go and buy a pair of slippers for you? But the father says, no, 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 don't waste money. Just give me an old pair of shoes, maybe the ones you're wearing. Now the author was wearing his favorite pair of boots. Reluctantly, he took them off and gave them to his father and he took out a shiny pair of leather shoes from his trunk and he wore them. And then the author gets into the bus and as the bus takes off, he peeps out and he sees his father 
turn around looking content in his new pair of boots and walking back home. Father wanted to say something but the bus started moving. I saw my father gradually receding into the distance. That means gradually disappearing. I saw that the road we had come by looked like a giant motionless rope. He was peeping out of the bus window and the road uphill to his home looked like a huge winding rope. Simultaneously, our journeys, whose journeys? The narrator's journey and the father's journey. They started in two opposite directions with me seated in the luxurious seat of a bus and father walking back with weary legs on the pebble strewn road. So here I would like to spend a moment or two with you. The author grew up in the same household as his father and mother. Yes, just because he went to a different institution for education or now he's in a different position in society, he has grown into an entire different world. So much that when he has come back home to visit his family, he's unable to find anything common amongst them. That is so sad. They are your first and foremost relations in your life. Yes, your parents, that's where you grew up. So when you go back to them, Try to go back to their world. Do not let the education or the new society you are living in, in tear you apart from them. That's not the right thing to do. Relations must never fade. So this is a real life story of the author, Mr. Yeshe Dorji Tongchi. And he recently received the Padma Award in 2020. And this was initially written in Assamese language because he is from the hills of Arunachal Pradesh. It has been translated by, into English by Mr. D. P. Nath. So this person wrote this story for you all to understand that relations are important. You mustn't change so much that the relations, the basic core of your life disappears. Keep it intact and treasure your relations. Now that's a wonderful story there, right? It's a narrative out of his real life. So next video, we will discuss the new words, question answers. I'll see you soon.